Today we are tackling one of my favorite videos to film throughout the whole year. I do this video every year, so if you're interested in seeing previous episodes, I will have them linked down below in the description box. But today we are doing an updated philodendron collection. And I actually have 30 different types of philodendron in my collection as of now, if as long as I hopefully haven't forgotten anybody. Um, I think it's actually a couple more than I had last year. I love philodendron so much. It's my favorite genus. I love collecting them. I love growing them. There's so much variety in the genus and they're just so stunning and they bring me so much happiness. So yeah, I have quite a few of them and that's not even including propagations or doubles or anything. It's just 30 different species that I have. So I cannot wait to share them with you and I'm actually adding a little bit of spice to this video because I'm going to be ranking them and I'm gonna share them with you in order from like my least favorite to my most favorite. So we're gonna be starting with number 30 and we're gonna end with my top number one favorite philodendron in my whole collection. So the video is just gonna be getting better and better as it goes on. So make sure you watch to the end to see some of the best plants in my whole collection, honestly. Before we hop into the video, hop down into the comments and write down what you think my number one philodendron is going to be. Make your guesses. I want to see them and then you can edit your comment after whatever if you want to add something else. But yeah, I think that would be fun to see what everyone thinks is going to be my favorite philodendron because I feel like you guys know me really well. Although there's a few that I really love, so I don't know. Cast your votes down below. Anyways, we have a lot of plants to go through, so without further ado, let's just hop right into it. Okay, so behind me, I have numbers 30 to 21. So the ones that I've ranked the lowest on my list, unfortunately. And I'm gonna start with number 30. So the philodendron that's come in last place. And that is my poor philodendron dark lord. Now I love this plant, I really do. It's known for it's dark, stunning foliage. Like, look at it, it looks beautiful on camera, the color. Obviously the name is Philodendron Dark Lord, which first of all, is such a cool name. And second of all, um, it's named that because it gets really dark foliage, which is a trait that I absolutely love in plants. I love dark foliage, I love silver foliage, and I love velvet foliage, which I feel like most plant people do. I feel like those are very coveted traits in plants. Um, but yeah, so that's why I wanted this one because the leaves can get quite big and they're very dark. I really don't have any philodendron like this in my collection either. Oh, I should mention that um, there is philodendron silver sword in this pot as well. So that's a different plant. I thought I thought I was doing this cool thing, making this mixed pot, and I feel like it has a lot of potential, but I've just neglected it. So it looks a little bit ratty, but um, I do have propagations of this plant as well because I'm gonna be starting a new philodendron dark lord from these cuttings right here, which I need to do that ASAP because this is just looking like, wow, I really need to at least change the water if I'm not gonna do it soon because these have been rooting in here forever and they're ready to be potted up. But yeah, it's looking pretty like full of algae and gross. Anyways, I do plan on potting this up and starting a new plant of this putting it on a moss pole and just paying more attention to it and trying to get it to thrive because this is ranked last only because I have not put in the time and effort caring for it to get it to look good. So it just hasn't really done much for me and you know, that's nobody's fault but my own. Um, so that's why it's last place. I do think it has a lot of potential and I am really excited to see it grow. I just haven't felt excited by my plant of this yet. So yeah, we'll see what the future brings and hopefully I have a nice big plant of this one day. Okay, next we have my Philodendron Chironier coming in at number 29 of 30. Honestly, I was debating putting this last place in 30 and I probably should just based on how things are going with it and how I feel about it right now. I think the only reason I didn't put it last is because I'm so excited about the potential of what the mature leaves could look like on this plant. I bought this, this, I didn't even buy this. This was sent to me by Plant Haven Toronto, but I chose it, I asked for it because 
I was looking at photos of um, more mature versions of this. And I mean, the juvenile leaves are very cute also. Like, look at that, it's adorable. And it gets a really nice sheen to it and everything. Mine is just not healthy and it's been struggling. So it looks, you know, it has a lot of yellowing leaves, leaves that look really damaged. Like it looks like it has spider mite damage or something, but I've been treating it for pests. Long story short, I just can't figure out how to get this th to thrive. Oh yeah, I was talking about the mature form. The mature form gets these big, long, like very textured, impressive leaves. So that was in my brain. I was like, I want that. However, it seems to be quite difficult for me to actually get to that point. So right now I'm just left with this plant, which is honestly frustrating me more than anything because I just, I'm like, you're living in the greenhouse cabinet. What more can I do for you? I don't know. Maybe I should take it out of the cabinet. Sometimes I have plants not doing well in the cabinet. Not very often, usually it's the opposite way around, but sometimes they're not doing well and then I take them out and they do better. So maybe I'll try taking it out. Um, I do have a cutting of it that I've rooted in moss that I was thinking of starting a new plant from because the new leaf actually surprisingly came out looking pretty good. So I might do that. I'm also, I'm still suspicious about spider mites on these, honestly. I think that this cutting has them. Um, so I think I'm going to be ordering beneficial mites soon because I'm just having a little bit of a spider mite problem at the minute and I feel like that's going to be the best way to cope with that. But anyways, philodendron charonier, not looking great right now, not impressing me right now, but I'm going to keep trying so that hopefully we can get the leaves to size up. Okay, next, number 28 on the list is my philodendron serpents. It's in this pot, but it's actually, um... It's actually planted in a much smaller pot. Maybe I'll take it out. So this is my philodendron serpents, and this is another one that I have struggled with a lot. This was a major wish list plant of mine when I first got it. It has these incredibly fuzzy petioles, as you can see, which is kind of like the, the distinguishing or like really unique feature about it. It's so cool, and I just love that so much. I even think the leaves are beautiful. I know people mostly get it because it has super fuzzy petioles, but I really like the leaves. I like that they're this dark green. I like the pleats. I think that they're quite pretty. I have had a difficult time growing this. There's no other way around it. It's just, I feel like I'm in this constant state of trying to figure out what it wants and changing conditions. And I've propagated it and started this one over, but then the new leaf came out looking like not great. It looks pale and it just doesn't look amazing. So I have cuttings of this that I'm going to pot up as well soon. But yeah, I don't know. I've just been trying to figure out how to get it to thrive. And um, yeah, I potted these up probably a few months ago now. I can't even really see many roots. Like, are you well? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can see roots in the moss pole though, um, surprisingly. Where are they? There you can see some. I say surprisingly because in the past I had a really hard time getting this to adhere or grow into a moss pole. That's why I put the plastic wrap around it this time to try to boost humidity and just really encourage the roots to grow into the moss. Um, so yeah, it's rooting into the moss now, but it just, it doesn't seem like it has a ton of roots in the pot. I don't know. I don't know, honestly, I need to pot up the propagations and grow another plant because I don't trust that this one is going to be doing amazing. I feel like I kind of need to check on the roots as well. Anyways, it's a plant that I absolutely love and I'm going to keep trying with. Mine just isn't doing the best. And now we are on, I believe, number 27. And the next plant is my philodendron sodoroi. Now, I have not had this for very long at all. Only, I think, three months maximum. I got this at the big box store for like $3.99 or something and I was so excited to find philodendron sodoroi, mostly because one of my favorite plants of all time is philodendron majestic and that is a hybrid of philodendron sodoroi. So I really wanted the, the pure sodoroi. The leaves are so beautiful. Like I admire these on social media all the time when other people are posting theirs. They, the leaves get quite big and they're very silver and just um, just gorgeous. So yeah, I was so excited to find this and so excited to start growing it. And I've just had a tough time with it. It's not really establishing itself. 
Um, the new leaves are just coming in kind of like weird. I'm not too sure what the problem is, honestly. I have this growing in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet and it just hasn't done much in the few months that I've had it. Yeah, it's definitely a plant that just seems to be kind of struggling right now. It looked really healthy when I got it and everything, so I'm just a little confused as to why this one is unhappy. I'm not really sure what it needs. I do find that sometimes juvenile plants are just difficult when they're small and young like this. So maybe it's just the case of that. It just needs to get a little bit more mature and establish itself more before it starts becoming easier. Or maybe there is something it needs that I'm not providing. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I'm gonna keep trying. I do have a pole in here ready for it, but it's obviously not really big enough to climb yet. I mean, actually I can attach it soon. But yeah, I don't know. It's just not really doing too much yet. I have a lot of hope for this. I really wanna see the leaves get bigger. So hopefully it starts doing well soon. Okay, next we have my philodendron subhastatum. This is a philodendron that I absolutely love. I think that the red backs are just gorgeous on it. Like, look at that. Oh my goodness, it is so pretty. This is actually a combo pot with the regular green version and also with the variegated version. If you can see that leaf right there. I've had both the green and the variegated version for about two years now. And I recently chopped and propped and then potted the cuttings back up together with the green and the variegated to make this little combo pot. I did that um, a couple, well, longer than that. It's probably been like three or four months now. And I think that since I did it in winter in my old place, which was not as bright and not as warm, um, I feel like since I did it then, it just took a long time to kind of get going. It's only recently really started growing and it just hasn't really been looking its best. Like the back of this isn't very red. It's kind of like pale. And um, yeah, I think it's just been taking a while to establish from that whole like propagation to potting and everything situation. So it's not really wowing me at the minute. Um, and it also just looks kind of crazy. I feel like I need to put this somewhere where the grow light is directly in front of it. Otherwise the leaves just stick like straight up and it just doesn't sit very nicely. So yeah, I need to uh, sort this out a little bit, but I think that it is going to look amazing. I can't wait to see it in the future. Um, these can get pretty big leaves as well. And I find that I don't see them in their mature form very often. So I'm just really curious to see how big I'm gonna be able to grow this. I have this on a Rousseau front closure pole and it is rooting into here now, which is really nice to see because it wasn't doing anything for a while. Like I said, it took a long time to get established. Um, and now it's growing in there, so that's great. I think I'm gonna see the, the speed of growth really pick up this summer. So yeah, I'm excited to see what this is gonna look like. Okay, coming in at number 25 is my philodendron Brazil. This is in a Wally Grow planter. I've made a couple videos about my Wally Grow planters. They were nicely hung and displayed in my old place. And here I have not decided where I want to hang them. So they're just kind of sitting in windowsills for now. But anyways, inside of this one is my beautiful philodendron Brazil. And I love this plant a lot. The only reason it's at number 25 and it's, you know, ranked a little bit lower than some of my other trailing philodendron is just because that I find it grows a lot more slowly than my other ones, like compared to my green heart leaf or um, the neon, the micans, like any of them, honestly, I feel like this is kind of the hardest to grow and the hardest to get going. And um, yeah, it's just kind of slow. It is beautiful though. I love the Brazil. I love the green variegation. Like it is so pretty and just such a classic plant, honestly. Like I said, I don't know where this is gonna end up going yet. I kind of am tempted to put it in the living room though because I don't know, I just think that the Brazil is so pretty to style. I love the colors and it just gives kind of like a chill vibe. I don't know what it is, but it gives me like you're on vacation in a beach house or something. It's just, it's a cool plant, so yeah. Okay, next we have my Ring of Fire. I got this plant because I've had my Philodendron Nero, which looks very similar to this, but it's just solid green. I've had that one for quite some time now, like a couple of years, and I had a previous one before as well. Anyways, the Philodendron Nero is a plant that I really love. 
And the Ring of Fire basically looks like a variegated version of that plant. So of course I had to grab one when they started popping up locally where I am. I've had this one for a little over a year now and I really like it, but I don't know if I love it. And I think that that's mostly due to mine not having the best variegation. It has some variegation, um, kind of like speckled throughout the leaves. The variegation on this plant kind of comes in more pink. This is the newest leaf. So you can see it's kind of more pink down here where the variegation is and speckled throughout but then it turns just kind of like a yellow or kind of just like a green, a green on green, yellowy type of variegation, like you can see on this older leaf. Um, anyways, I see a lot of peoples that are really variegated and look just stunning, but mine just doesn't have a ton of variegation. So I think that that's why it's not my favorite. I'm gonna keep growing it out, of course, because you never know, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll start to get more variegation or once it outgrows the pole, maybe I'll chop it and then maybe get more, more variegation through doing that. We'll see what happens, but um, it's doing really well and I've found this to be a really easy plant to grow. So I am excited to see um, to see how it goes in the future with this one. It is really rooted into a moss pole, which is always good. It's climbing as you can see. Um, and I've recently taken this out of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet that it was living in and moved it outside. So this is now living on my deck and I'm curious to see how it's gonna do living outdoors for the summer. This is the only philodendron I have out there. So it's kind of experimental. It's a covered deck, don't worry. It's not gonna get scorched or anything. But um, yeah, I can see that it's already pushing out a new leaf and I'm really curious to see what that leaf is gonna look like. This was actually a really weird, crazy leaf that it put out. This entire, it only gave like half a leaf for some reason. You can see it was like, started having the other half of the leaf here and then it just stopped growing, I guess. You can see it's just like missing this big chunk here. And then this was all variegated. It was bright, bright yellow for a long time, like a few months, I would say, until it kind of faded to just this green. But yeah, anyways, really interesting plant and one that I'm excited to spend more time growing. Next on the list, I think that this is number 23. We have my Philodendron Glorious, which is a hybrid between Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. And mine just, I don't know, as far as my Philodendron hybrids go and as far as my Velvet Philodendrons go, this one just hasn't been my favorite. And don't get me wrong, I love this plant. Like when I see the potential and when I see other people's Philodendron Glorious, I'm like, wow, that is phenomenal. I would love to have mine looking like that one day. But um, to be honest with you, I've just had a bit of a difficult time growing this. I find that the leaves can get stuck. Um, I haven't really like 100% figured out what conditions it likes. And yeah, I don't know. It's just not looking as good as something like my Philodendron Splendid is and I just haven't had a super easy time growing it. I think that it might be getting too much light now, so I'm gonna have to move it back from the window. This leaf looks damaged. I don't know if that's from, it looks like spider mite damage or something like that. I don't see spider mites on it, but you never know. I really love how dark and velvety the leaves are on this, so I'm just gonna be continuing growing it. I don't dislike this plant at all, I really like it, but it's just not up in like my absolute favorites when it comes to philodendron, so yeah. I need to extend the pole soon as well. It's like basically at the very top of the pole. It's really rooted in there too. Loves to climb. I find that I really have to keep up with the watering on this one or else the leaves start to get stuck when they're trying to emerge. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for this one, my Philodendron Glorious. Next, we have this little cutie right here. This is my Philodendron Heteraceum Variegated or the Variegated Hartley Philodendron. And as you can see, mine is just a little baby. This came from a cutting from Charmaine's plant and it's so cute. Look at the newest leaf. Like the variegation is so good on that. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. Obviously I haven't had this for very long. I've only had it for a few months and um, it's just kind of starting to get established. I think that I am going to just adore this plant. So I'm so excited to see it grow some more. It's just, it's just starting out right now. So um, yeah, we have a ways to go, but I have a feeling that I'm really, really gonna love this. I love Hartley Philodendron and um, I'm just really excited to be trying my hand at this little variegated one.
This is also the only type of philodendron heteraceum that I have growing up a moss pole. So I'm really excited to see that. I just thought it would look really nice. And especially with the variegated leaves, I think it's just gonna display them really well. So yeah, excited to see what this is gonna look like within like the next year. Number 21 is a big one. This is my philodendron painted lady. And I have been a fan of the Painted Lady for years now. I've had it for years. As you can see, it's quite large. It's on a Trifolia self-watering moss pole. And um, it's supported also by a bamboo stake. And I've also recently kind of taken it off of the moss pole because I'm doing some propagating. So there, let me try to show you. So I have these little propagation orb things on there and you can actually see that it has rooted, if you can see there, it's rooted into there. Um, and I'm doing this air layering because I'm going to be chopping this soon and starting the plant over again. Because for me, it's just too unmanageable right now. This keeps falling over. She's just out of control. But yeah, I do love her. I'm just excited to start over with a smaller plant. The reason I'm air layering is because I'm trying to maintain some of her size because she does have pretty decently sized leaves. They were quite large and then this size kind of started decreasing a little bit as this plant just, I don't know, was getting more neglected, I guess. But yeah, she's so beautiful, especially the new leaves when she's getting high light, they come in with a lot of yellow variegation and it's just speckled on there so nicely. So yeah, I really love this plant. I love the pink petioles, the contrast, like it's just, the color is beautiful on it. This leaf too is so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love her. She's just, um, she's just a little wild. <laughs> Oh my goodness, she's got a lot of roots in here. Honestly, I'm gonna be able to chop her soon. That's really exciting. Okay, so we are now entering the kind of mid-range of the rankings. So we're gonna be covering number 20 to number 11. And coming in hot at number 20 is my beautiful philodendron mykins, which is basically the velvety philodendron heteraceum or heartleaf philodendron look at how beautiful oh my goodness i love this plant so much like i really do just love it love trailing plants love velvet um yeah this is just gorgeous this is actually potted in a pot i just have it sitting in this wally grow planter which is again not hung up but it is just living in this pot and we have a ton of propagations that are finally starting to grow from up there as well. So that's really great to see. As much as I love this plant, I will say that it's definitely the hardest to grow out of my trailing philodendron and out of my philodendron in general, I really had, I really had a tough time getting this started. Now that it's more established, it's quite easy. It's quite forgiving. It grows quickly and it just, it does well in general, but pro I've had problems propagating this plant in the past and it's just taken a really long time to get going. I've actually grown this whole plant from a one leaf cutting, which is pretty cool, you know, I'm pretty proud of that. It has taken a few years, but um, yeah, now I have a full pot, which is awesome. And my plan is to continue propagating it and then I eventually want to pot it directly in that Wally Grow planter so it can kind of fill out a larger pot and just get really lush and bushy. Mine doesn't have the biggest leaves, honestly. I don't have this in like a really highlight location or anything, so that's probably why, but it is quite pretty still, so. I don't really mind. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. I love that the new leaves come in a kind of more orangey color, as you can see down here. Look at how pretty that is. This plant is very like fall vibes. Um, yeah, I'm excited to keep growing it. I love it very much. I don't think I would ever get rid of it. I'd always like to have a Mykins in my collection. It's just a classic, honestly. Yeah, great plant. This one is actually really thirsty right now, which I didn't even realize. So I'm glad that I'm filming this video so that I can give this guy a drink. Next, we have my Philodendron Gloriosum, which is a bit of a sad story, honestly, because this probably would have been even higher up on my list if it didn't go so downhill. Um, this is actually, I guess, like the mother plant. I have two Philodendron Gloriosum. The other one is cuttings that I air layered and then I chopped and I potted and now they're basically dying. Like they're just like 
facing the ground pretty much and they look really sad so this is the better looking of the two which is why i'm going to show it to you but yeah philodendron gloriosum is honestly another kind of classic plant it's a crawling philodendron which i don't have too many of them and it has these big velvety heart-shaped leaves it's so gorgeous oh my goodness the leaves get massive i love this plant so much i can't even tell you how much i love it um but yeah i propagated mine it did not go well i've tried to propagate this twice and it hasn't gone well either time so i don't know i am going to be chopping this up and starting off and hopefully i'm going to get several cuttings from this and um, hopefully, you know, one or two of them will make it and I'll be able to start over again and grow out a nice one. But um, yeah, you know, a plant that I love a lot, but I will say I haven't had the easiest time growing it. That's the reason I'm so bummed though, is because this was so big and beautiful before I chopped it. I wish I would just would have left it because it was doing so well. The leaves were so gorgeous. And yeah, I'm just kind of sad about it because what I have left is, not very impressive, but that's okay. I'm just going to start over and keep going and eventually I'll have a nice, beautiful, big one again. Okay, so next, I don't even know what number we're on anymore, but next is my beautiful green Harley Philodendron. This is the original, the classic. I feel like tons of people have this in their collection because it's such a common and popular plant, but it's like that for a reason. And the reason is because it's so easy to grow and it's so beautiful. There's a lot of different ways you can style this. It looks beautiful in every space. You can get away with a lot of different types of light for this. And yeah, it's just such a forgiving plant. It grows quickly. It's gorgeous. I love the color of green that the leaves are. It's kind of like a darker, I guess, I guess they're a mid-tone green, but um, yeah, I don't know. They just look so pretty. I have this in a pink Wally Grow planter, which is so cute. And it's getting so long, you guys. Like she is a beast, honestly. Yeah, I love this plant a lot. I've always really liked the look of just the regular green Hartley philodendron. I think a lot of people overlook this now and don't have them in their collections, but I just really appreciate it. So I'm glad that I do have one in my collection. Next we have another crawling philodendron actually, and this is my philodendron mame. I believe it's the mame silver cloud. And this is a plant that I love very much, but I have had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it because it can be quite difficult. And one of the things that makes it difficult is that it can be a spider mite magnet. I do try to spray this, like proactively spray it down with my Sacred Elements um, leaf tonic every time I water because that will keep them away. But yeah, in the past, you know, I had to learn that lesson the hard way because this thing was constantly getting spider mites. And I've heard other people say that that's a problem that they've had with their... Oh, is this the newest leaf here? Oh my goodness. I thought this was the newest one, but no, this is the newest one. And it looks a little bit sad. I think that that's because this one emerged during the move. So it was definitely not getting the best care and it's still is kind of bouncing back i think from the move because it was drying out so much it needs to be watered again right now actually basically the main problem i've had with this plant is spider mites other than that i think it's so gorgeous and um yeah you just can't beat that variegation it also has cute little ruffly petioles on the back and i love like the pleating of the leaves it looks very just um it looks very pillowy these can get really big and I'm excited to grow this more, honestly, because I've only had it for about a year and much of that year was just spent battling spider mites and kind of trying to figure this plant out. So now that I feel like I kind of understand its needs a little bit better, I think I'm going to be able to take better care of it and hopefully grow it out to reach more of its potential, you know? So yeah, Philodendron Mame. She looks pretty good, actually, honestly. And she's getting pretty big, which is very fun. So yeah, I do love this plant. She also needs to be repotted soon because again, she's a crawler and she's just in a round terracotta and she's literally hitting the edge of it right now. So I'm gonna have to put her into a rectangular planter soon. Okay, I think that this is number 16 on the list. 
This is my beautiful philodendron rio, which is yet another form of the philodendron heteraceum. I have a lot of varieties of philodendron heteraceum in my collection is something I'm realizing right now. But um, yeah, this is actually quite similar to the philodendron brazil in terms of the variegation. However, this one has a lot more like cream-like variegation. The leaves are a little bit more pointed and um, yeah, it's like cream and silver variegation and it goes pink when it gets sun stressed. It's really, really pretty. I love this one. There's quite a few varieties that have different names and have like slightly different like patterns of this silver and cream variegation. There's like the silver stripe, which I used to have. I wasn't really a fan of that one. I much prefer the Rio. Um, there's also like the cream splash the Gabby. Yeah, there's a few of them But I'm really really happy that I have the Rio. I don't know I just really like it and it's been growing quite well for me Like look at how pretty that like minty silver. Oh my goodness. I Love her a lot. I actually cut this recently and I didn't even check if it started grow. Oh, yeah She is she's wait Wait, oh yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, we have two growth points. Okay, so I cut this. I was doing a trade with somebody like a month ago um, or like six weeks ago. And um, I decided to, I didn't know if she had this plant yet, but I just decided to chop mine and give a cutting because I just really like this philodendron and I feel like a lot of people would appreciate it. So I did that and um, I cut it here. That's where the top of the plant is. And we have a growth point coming out there. And then one also activated down here. So look at that. We're gonna have two new vines coming out. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, wow, look at this leaf. So, so, oh my goodness. That has to be my favorite one on the whole plant. Like, look at that. <gasps> wow. That is just so pretty. I need to take a picture of this leaf. I think that was when it was living in my greenhouse cabinet. So it was very, very happy. Man, maybe I should try growing this up a moss pole, honestly. I feel like the leaves could just get so big and beautiful. I haven't really seen anyone grow this on a moss pole yet. That like doesn't even look like a heart leaf, like a heteraceum leaf. It looks huge. Wow, my goodness. I don't appreciate this plant enough, honestly. I know that I love it, but I just don't really like come up to it and look at it as often as I should. But when I do look at it, I'm like, dang, dang girl. Okay, I'm gonna put her down. Okay, next we have a plant that has kind of become a recent love or obsession of mine. And um, I'm still, you know, I still don't completely trust it because this plant reverts like that. Like it's so crazy. It's really hard to keep the variegation on this plant. This is my philodendron Burley Marks variegata. Um, only like half of it is actually because a lot of it has just reverted and is growing just regular Burley Marks green leaves, um, which is fine. I'm considering, I mean, I'll probably chop this eventually because it's outgrowing the pole already. I'll probably chop this eventually. Maybe I'll add another pole and then chop. I don't know, I'm not decided, but I might just try to isolate the variegated ones so when I do a new plant of this one, I can just have the variegated pieces. But yeah, this plant was all variegated at one time and um, just it reverts so easily, like I said. So I'm thankful to even have any variegated leaves on here. But that's the reason I'm so obsessed with it right now is because the leaves that are variegated are just so stunning. Like, look at that. Look at that. Why do you have to be so hard to keep your variegation when it is so, so pretty? This is a plant that goes way back on my wish list. Like when I was first getting into plants in like 2019, this was one that I really, really wanted. Um, so yeah, I do really love it. But I've learned, I've learned the hard way that it's hard to keep the variegation. I used to have a different one and that one completely reverted on me. Um, and now I have this one, but at least I have a lot of vines in here. So um, like it's branched out into a lot of different vines. So hopefully I have a lot of chances to kind of keep the variegation going. Um, but yeah, I think it is a really stunning plant. I'm excited to add another pole, try to get some larger leaves on this because the leaves can get quite large and they look so gorgeous. So yeah, really love this one. Just don't love that it reverts on me. 
Okay, next we have this little cutie patootie. This is my philodendron silver sword. Now, if you have seen some of my videos in the past or probably even my last philodendron collection, I used to have a really massive philodendron silver sword and it was just taking over my whole apartment. So I unfortunately had to rehome that one last year. Yeah, last year I did that, I believe. And um, yeah, I just have this little baby one that I grew from propagations. I think this one was actually grown from wet sticks and it's just kind of starting to grow out and get established. I do need to repot this and put it on a moss pole soon because I need to start trying to get this to size up because I really want a big one again. I mean, maybe not as big as the one I had in terms of like, there was too many vines, so it was just kind of crazy, but like three or four vines growing up a moss pole is what I want from this plant. I've had several of these. I've honestly probably had like four or five different silver sword philodendrons in my collection and um the first one or the second one that i got the first one that i got made me fall in love with this plant and then the second one that i got made this plant my number one philodendron and now we're down to like what are we at number 13 or 14 on the list which is kind of sad but um i think this is gonna hop right back up into being one in my like top three or five favorites once it grows out because the leaves are so stunning, especially when they're big. They're just, mm, it's a beautiful plant. And I love the color, love the silver. I find it really easy to grow as well once they're a little bit more mature and more established. I mean, this is even easy when it's small. It's just an easy plant. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to kind of fall back in love with this and grow it out again. Maybe I should do that in a repot with me, put this on a pole and everything. I have a lot of plant chores. Let me know as you're watching this video, comment down below and let me know which plants you would be most excited about watching videos on me working with them because I just have a lot of things that I wanna do and that I'm kind of mentioning as I go through these plants. So yeah, for example, if you want to see me repot and put this on a poll, leave a comment down below. If you wanna see me do the Dark Lord, leave a comment. If you wanna see me propagate the Gloriosum, leave a comment. Just let me know what you wanna see. Oh, also, when I was talking about the Gloriosum, I forgot to say thank you to everyone who's commenting on one of my last videos, the one where I um, did my bedroom kind of makeover and the shelf and everything. I was talking about propagating my Gloriosum and I was asking y'all for tips. And I've received so many comments with great advice. So thank you so much to everyone who left a comment about that. I really appreciate hearing all of your wisdom. It really helps me out, so thank you. Okay, next we have my ghosty gal, my philodendron Florida ghost. Look at these leaves. Look at her ghosty leaves. This is the newest one, just unfurled, very white, scarily white actually um yeah she is gorgeous and she is growing in a crazy pattern as you can see she's kind of this leaf always trips me out it looks so weird it looks like the ink was like running out on the printer or something it looks so crazy it's always been like that um but yeah this is my philodendron florida ghost she's growing in a crazy pattern because i'm just letting her kind of trail down she actually sits on top of my cupboards over there um, and she's just like cascading down and I think that she looks really cool. I don't know what she thinks about it though because she's dropping a lot of leaves. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was kind of to be expected though that she's dropping all of these white leaves because that's what happens with this plant. If your plant is putting out solid white leaves and they're not turning green like they're supposed to, they're supposed to come out light and then slowly fade to like a minty and then fade to a green. But I tend to have a problem with philodendron Florida ghost. Well, I've had both problems. I've had the problem of the leaves just coming out green. Like they don't really go through the ghost phase. They're just green or they're very, they're like slightly lighter. Like they come out a light green and then they get darker, but they don't come out like this beautiful white. Um, I've had that problem. And then I've also had the problem of the leaves coming out white and not turning green. And inevitably, they will die because they don't have chlorophyll um so yeah i think that's kind of what's happening that's what's happening now and i think that she's letting go of all these white ones she was holding on to now just because of the stress of the move like she's like okay that's it i'm getting rid of these now so she does have <clears throat> a big chunk of her vine which is naked now so that's kind of sad i'm kind of i love this plant like honestly i do let me put this down it's so pretty like oh my goodness I should take a picture of that. 
Um, anyways, this is a plant that I've had for quite a while, for a few years now, and before that I had a different one. So I've had this plant in my collection for a long time, and um, I love it a lot. I'm undecided of what I'm going to be doing with this one. I'm debating chopping it up, but I kind of just like the way that it's growing. Um, so I don't know. And typically this plant responds to lighting conditions. So if you lower the lights, then you'll start getting more green back in the leaves again. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for because since where she's sitting right now, she's kind of just getting ambient light. It's not really high light. So I'm hoping she's gonna start giving me some more green leaves, but we'll see what happens. She is in this self-watering planter <clears throat> in the Crystal Star Pond. And she seems to really like living in pond. Um, I've heard that this can be a thirsty philodendron. Keeps things really easy for me with the self-watering and with the water gauge as well. Since she's, she's sitting on the cupboard, I have to um, use a stepladder to reach her. So um, it's just convenient for me to not have to water her very often <clears throat> in this pot. So yeah, I love her a lot. We'll see what happens, I guess. Okay, number 12, you guys. Oh my goodness. I didn't even want to pick this plant up because he's just so crazy. And I added this extension on recently and um, he's not he's not attached to it yet. So it's a little bit unstable. So I'm waiting for him to grow up some more. But this is my philodendron Billetier. I honestly need to repot him or like prop him in the pot better or something because he is leaning lately. He's quite massive. I feel like I can't even get the whole plant into, oh my goodness, there's a lot of plants happening right now here. Let's see um, if I can get more of him into the frame. Yeah, he's pretty big, honestly. Pretty big. Unfortunately, during the move, this was a plant that got knocked over and it completely snapped off his newest leaf. So now we just have a new growth point that's emerging right there. So. I'm curious to see what the new growth is gonna look like. I have no idea. Um, I guess I'll find out once that leaf pops out. But yeah, this is a really easy philodendron in my experience. I find they do need a good amount of light though, or else um, you'll get really leggy internodes and you'll also get really long petioles like this. I honestly feel like this plant just kind of has long petioles in general, but they're gonna get even longer if there's not a lot of light and you're gonna get the really long internodes, so it's just gonna sprawl even more than it has to. Um, once I increased the light, it, the growth became more compact in terms of the internodal spacing. I feel like this is a classic plant as well. I've had this for several years now, grew it from a little one leaf cutting, I believe, and it's just been so easy and fun to watch the new leaves come in because they're so big. Yeah, a really great plant, honestly, and I'm excited to kind of uh, get him situated a little bit better here and for him to start growing up this pole extension and everything. Okay, and then number 11 is my Philodendron Brantianum, which kind of shocks me. It still shocks me how much I like this plant and how well it's doing for me because, first of all, I used to not like it at all. It was actually on my plants I dislike, one of those videos that I did a long time ago. And um, second of all, it's just a, one that can be, or is known to be really difficult and was kind of difficult for me at first, but... Um, Actually, it was difficult for me for a while. The leaves were really getting stuck, but now something's happened and it's just happy and it's established and it's growing and I'm getting bigger leaves. <clears throat> like, look at this leaf. It's so, so beautiful, even throughout the move, you guys. It's been growing the whole time and I keep thinking like, oh, I'm gonna get an ugly leaf soon. I mean, this one doesn't look the best, this newest one, but I'm gonna forgive her because I know it's just because of the move. Um, other than that, this plant is looking just immaculate. I have it on a moss pole, as you can see, a thickly pole. Um, this is like the regular thickly grow pole size, and then this is the small one on top. I was having troubles extending it or something. Um, anyways, she doesn't mind. She's just happy to be climbing, to be growing it all. Just a gorgeous philodendron, like, oh my goodness. The silver on this is crazy, and the fact that mine is finally starting to size up just absolutely blows my mind. So yeah, I'm just, I'm in love with it. 
I'm really glad that I ended up getting one. I actually got this just as a cutting through a trade, like a couple of years, almost a couple of years ago now. Um, and now here we are, I've propagated it multiple times and she's just looking stunning and I'm so happy to be growing it. So I'm really curious to see how big I can get the leaves. Cause if they're gonna get bigger than this, wow, I will be just in awe. Okay, are you ready to see some of my favorite plants in my whole entire collection? These are my top 10 favorite philodendron. Philodendron is my all-time favorite genus of plants. So yeah, I just really, really love all these plants behind me here. Okay, coming in at number 10 is my philodendron viricosum. This is probably the least impressive out of all of the plants behind me, <clears throat> but I just had to rank this one at number 10 because I genuinely feel like the philodendron varicosum has potential to be my number one favorite philodendron. I just have not completely cracked the code on growing it. I feel like perhaps I'm turning a corner now because this newest leaf is quite nice, quite impressive, and I'm gonna try to keep this momentum going. Uh, it's still hardening off, but oh my goodness, even like the back, it's so like maroon. Look at that purpley red back. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. Um, yeah, so this leaf came out within the last couple of weeks and I'm just really loving it. So. I'm regaining some hope on growing this plant. Um, I've had, I mean, I've had an okay time growing it in the past. It's just always gotten too out of control, like too leggy or um, too, I don't know, for one reason or another, or it's had pests or something. There's always been a reason that I've had to chop it back. So I've never really been able to grow it to its more mature state, but I'm really hoping I'm gonna be able to do that this time because this philodendron just has so many characteristics that I love, which is why I feel like if I can grow this big, it will be my favorite plant of all time. Um, it has a nice, beautiful, like velvety sheen to the leaf. It has fuzzy petioles. Um, it's a climbing philodendron. It gets massive leaves and it has the beautiful vivid red backs. I love like the whole kind of pattern it has. There's so many different types of philodendron varicosum. I don't actually know what type this is. I'm just, I don't know, assuming it's like the most common regular philodendron varicosum, whatever that one might be called. I got this from Botanica's. Yeah, I got it from Botanica's a couple of years ago now. Wow, it's crazy. Wait, is that even true? Is that where this came from? I feel like it did come from Botanicas. Yeah, but more like three years ago. I think this came, I think this came in the first shipment they ever sent to me. Anyways, I've had it for a while. Um, but yeah, I just love philodendron varicosum so much. Whenever I see people post their beautiful mature specimens, I just die a little bit. So yeah, can't wait to see what happens on my journey of trying to grow this out. I'm gonna be extending the pole right away and hopefully we start to get some bigger leaves. Coming in at number nine, we have my beautiful philodendron lemon lime. Again, this is another variety of philodendron heteraceum. And if you would have told me that this was gonna be in my top favorite philodendron, top 10 favorite philodendron, I would not have believed you because I wasn't really a fan of this plant until I started growing it. I just got this to kind of bring some variety to my Wally Grow wall. Again, it's in a Wally Grow planter. I just bought this to kind of have a different shade of green, just a different variety growing on the wall because I had a lot of different, um, or not a lot of different, but I had a few different types of philodendron heteraceum and I just wanted them to all be different. So that's why I got this one. It looked very sad when I got it. And yeah, it just, it didn't impress me very much. I just kind of was like, whatever, I'm gonna throw it in there and hopefully it'll look good. And then I ended up falling in love because this plant, you guys, it has grown like an absolute weed. The color is just insane. Like it's so just vivid neon yellowy green. It is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. Like look how long it is. And it's so full as well. Like not only is it long, but it's so just like thick, like full and lush and Oh my goodness, I love it so much. <laughs> my mind has been completely changed on this plant. It adds such a cool pop of color to any room. It just looks phenomenal. So yeah, I am converted to being a huge fan of this one. It is just beautiful. Yeah, I love it so much. So definitely one of my all-time favorites. 
Okay, next we have my philodendron Bromarx Fantasy, which is a really unique climbing philodendron that I honestly don't see very often. Like I don't see a lot of people growing this one and it's really unique looking. I feel like it can be a little bit tricky to grow at times. So maybe that's why it's not, you know, as popular as perhaps some of the other philodendrons. But I just think that this plant is so cool. I love the kind of like pattern and sheen to the leaves. It is so beautiful. And it's like a blue color. Like it's a very kind of bluey green, almost like silvery um, color. It just has a very unique, uh, just, leaf I guess compared to all of my other philodendron like the texture the um look of it is just very very different it has like crazy veining if you get really close up to the leaves and it's also kind of sparkly when the sun hits it too it's very very beautiful I've been growing this for years now and only recently have I had some success with it which is why it's now in my top 10 favorite philodendron because it's finally growing up a pole and rooting into the pole and the leaves are starting to size up and it's just looking so good. These bluey tone philodendron just get me and this one is really something special. I actually extended the pole and took it out of the greenhouse cabinet not long ago and it hasn't missed a beat even with moving and everything. I've been so surprised and impressed with how well it's done. It's still growing. It just put out this leaf. This is like freshly unfurled. There's uh, I think three, two or three vines growing in here. And then this is another new leaf on the biggest vine that is still furled, but it'll be unfurling soon. One of my favorite things about this plant is how the leaves lay, like the position of them. I talk about this in some of my videos, how I just really like the way some plants like lay kind of flat against whatever they're climbing. And that's a trait that this philodendron definitely has. So yeah, is it a plant that I've struggled with? Yes, I've struggled with it in terms of getting it to size up and also in terms of the leaves getting stuck in the petiole as well. But now it's growing great for me and I don't know, maybe it's just one of those things where they can be trickier when they're juvenile, but then once they kind of start to get some momentum, they become a little bit easier. That's how it feels at least. Um, it's rooted into the pole, which is, Really nice to see some roots in there. And I just love it. I think that it's so cool. The leaves can get actually quite big too, which is neat because I feel like most of the time when you see them, they're just small, like even like this size down here, but um, they can get like big, which is cool. So yeah, I'm really excited to see this grow. I think that this is number six on my list. And this is my Philodendron Narrow, also called Philodendron Jungle Boogie which is quite fun. Um, and it's just this kind of like wavy looking long slender leaf. It is so cool and unique. This is also called, what is it? Like tiger tooth or something. It has a lot of names. Some, some philodendron or some plants in general just tend to have a lot of names and this is one of them. She's beautiful. I love this plant very much. It grows so quickly, so easily. I'm loving growing it on a pole. Um, that's really making me fall in love with this plant because I just feel like the leaves are sizing up so much and it's growing so quickly and it's so happy. There's so many roots in this pole. It's crazy. So a lot of them are sticking out uh, of the top here. You can see them all. Yeah, it's doing so well. Just such an easy philodendron. It's affordable. It's easy to find usually, at least where I am. And I've just had so much fun growing it. This is the one I was talking about when I said I was inspired to get the Ring of Fire by the green version, which is, I don't think that they're actually the same plant. Like I don't think the Ring of Fire is exactly this plant with variegation. I think they just look similar. But anyways, I love this one so much I wanted to get the Ring of Fire, but I honestly prefer this one. It's just been easier to grow. I love the deep green leaves. The new leaves actually come in pink, which is really cool. Uh, there's a new leaf coming in right now. It always has a new leaf coming in. I don't know how pink that looks on the screen, but in person, it's definitely pink and it's beautiful, especially if it gets high light, this will be really pink, which is cool. It's not getting a ton of light right now, but I don't think it's gonna mind, honestly. It's just such a low maintenance plant. It actually just had two blooms as well that recently came off. So it was really cool that this was actually blooming for me. Philodendron don't do that very often when they're grown inside. Um, so yeah, she's a very happy plant. Number five is my Philodendron Tortum. 
which is notoriously difficult to show on camera because of its spindly nature, but it's a really unique philodendron. It has these almost like palm frond like leaves. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It's just so like spindly and weird. Um, one of the coolest things about this plant is how the new leaves come in. They look very like contorted and creepy. I wish I had one right now to show you, but I don't because this is the newest leaf and it just came out not too long ago. So it's not pushing a new leaf yet. I have this big main plant growing in here. And then I also have a secondary plant, which is just kind of staying really compact and short down here. It's kind of nice though, cause it like fills out the bottom and then she's also climbing. So we have like fullness and then we also have height, <laughs> which is really cool. I just have mine growing on a bamboo stake. And I recently noticed that she's actually rooted onto the stake. Like her roots have adhered. So she's climbing this thing, which is so crazy. Um, I just wanted like a minimal look with this plant. I didn't want to do a thick moss pole or anything. I thought that that would kind of take away from the whole look of this plant. So that's why I opted for just a bamboo stake and she seems to love it. This plant grows like a weed. Uh, again, the leaves come in, the new leaves come in like pink, a pinky orange, which is so cool. And they're just so fun to watch unfurl. So yeah, this she's just growing so much for me. She's doing so well. The leaves are getting quite big and I just enjoy growing it. I feel like it looks really cool in my home and it's just different from any of my other philodendron. Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm counting wrong. That one, the tortum was number six. Now we're on number five. I forgot I have another one that I didn't bring over here because it's gonna fall over. Um, anyway, so this is number five. This is my philodendron gigas and she's a beautiful velvet climbing philodendron. Not so much a heart shape, but it's more of a teardrop shape, at least when they're young. Um, and I just love that about it so much. This is the newest leaf right here and it's just gorgeous. I'm obsessed. This is one of my favorite philodendron, obviously, because of how beautiful it is and how much easier it is to grow than other similar philodendron. For example, this is kind of one that I grow in place of growing philodendron melanochrysum because I feel like I still get those really beautiful, elongated, super dark velvety leaves, but without the hassle that the Melanochrysum brings to me. Um, this one, I don't have problems with the leaves getting stuck, at least not very often. And the new leaves still come in a beautiful bronzy color. This one's just, it was bronzy, but now it's darkening. Um, the leaves can get really big, it climbs. This one is easy to propagate. There's just so many things to love about it. And again, it lays the way that I really like in plants. Like it's very like flat. Uh, if you see, like it's just like straight, almost like parallel to the moss pole. I just think that it looks so beautiful. A lot of people don't realize how big these can get, but they actually can get really massive <laughs> mature leaves. So I'm very curious to see how big I can grow this and just watch it grow more because I haven't really grown it past like, this is probably the tallest I've ever grown it actually. And I've always just decided to prop it for some reason, but now I'm just letting it grow out. I'm so excited to see how it does. And it just brings me so much joy. Every time it's putting out a new leaf, I get so excited. We have a new one coming in right now. Basically, as soon as the leaf comes out, it's already working on the next one. So it's always growing. And yeah, I just think it's really unique. Like it's different than my other velvet philodendron because of the shape, because it's not the heart shape. It's very, very cute. So yeah, I love the philodendron gigas. I've said before that I feel like it's underrated. I feel like, you know, more people should try it out because I think people would really love this plant if they give it a go. Okay, coming in at number four is my beautiful philodendron El Choco Red or philodendron Rubri Juvenile if you prefer the accurate name, the botanical name, I guess. Um, if you've been following my channel for a while, then you would know that this is one of my all time favorite plants. I've had it for a few years now. I actually got it the same time that I got my Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy and I got them both from very tiny babies. So I can't believe how big this one has grown. It has these beautiful heart shaped velvet leaves. This is a new leaf. So it's a little bit lighter in color still. It hasn't completely hardened off yet. Oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. This actually came out while I was moving or it was starting to come out while I was moving. So I was very concerned for this leaf. I didn't think it was going to look very nice, but it looks pretty much perfect. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. This plant has been battling spider mites a little bit as well. 
unfortunately, but yeah, this is the last leaf. It's very dark and beautiful. I just love this plant so much. It's been relatively easy for me. I have mine on a moss pole and I feel like that's helped the leaves just size up like crazy. This is probably like the biggest leafed plant that I have. Is that true? I think that might be true right now. Yeah, she's big. She's quite impressive, honestly. I did recently take off a lot of leaves. It had a lot of just like really damaged looking leaves like this. Um, I left a couple on. I left this one on and I left this one on. Um, but the two, oh my goodness, is this one? Oh, this is the problem that I get with it. It's because of me underwatering, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it, but yeah, it starts to like yellow around the edges. So don't underwater her. But other than that, I think that this is a really easy plant and it's really easy to size up. Like if you're looking for a velvet philodendron that you can size up quickly, go with the El Choco Red because this is sized up like nothing else in my collection, honestly, except for the Splendid. That one's sized up a lot too. But I think this one's sized up even quicker and um, larger. So yeah, she's quite immaculate, honestly. Love her so much. We are now entering philodendron royalty territory, the top three philodendron in my whole collection. Coming in at number three is my philodendron El Guapo, previously known as philodendron SP Silver or philodendron SP Columbia. This is a philodendron that has really pillowy leaves, which is one of the things that I absolutely loved about it. It just looks so like ruffly and pleated. I love the texture to the leaf. And the other thing that I loved about it, just like the combination of these two things is really what did it for me, but is the color. So it has that kind of blue green color to it. And I just think it is so, so stunning. These can get very large. They're beautiful heart-shaped leaves, and yeah, it just has a lot of characteristics that all put together. I just had to have it. This was a major wish list plant for me at the end of, I guess at the end of 2021. I got it at the very beginning of 2022, so I've had it for about a year and a half now, and it was just, I mean, it wasn't a tiny plant when I got it, but it wasn't, it was a small plant still. It's obviously grown a lot. It's quite big now. I've never propagated this or anything like that. I've just let it grow. I have it on a moss pole, which is actually interesting because this plant is typically a crawler. However, mine is growing climbing. Something about the way that it looks, I can tell that it's a crawler and that perhaps it wants to crawl, but I'm growing it climbing and I'm having a great time growing it climbing. The plant is doing well. This is a new leaf that has just hardened off it looks phenomenal so since it's doing well and the leaves are sizing up and it seems happy oh my goodness sorry it's so hard to get some of these big ones on camera but since it's doing so well i'm just gonna continue to grow it climbing for now honestly maybe one day i'll propagate it and try growing one crawling i'm kind of curious too but right now it's loving life and i'm loving it and we're all just having a grand time over here. It does have quite long petioles. I've had to tie a couple of them together because they're just kind of all over the place. But in general, it's gorgeous. It sits beside my TV near the window and it's so happy. Can't wait to see it continue to grow and see how big I can actually get the leaves on this thing. Yeah, I just love it so much. Obviously it's in my top three philodendron, which is crazy. And I'm so glad that I do love it this much just because I wanted it so badly and I had such high expectations for it. It's 100% delivered on those expectations. So yeah, just a, just a wonderful plant to grow, honestly. Okay, and then the one that I had off camera because it's been falling over on me a lot lately <laughs> is my beautiful philodendron splendid so this is coming in at number two which i'm sure is no surprise to anybody because i love this plant i'm always showing this plant and talking about this plant it's been such a great grower for me this started out from a tiny little baby plant uh less than two years ago now yeah less than two years ago which is so crazy because now it's massive i have two vines growing up this and it's just, oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with this plant. This is a hybrid of Philodendron varicosum, which we know that I love, and Philodendron melanochrysum. 
and it really gets the best of both parents, honestly. It has this beautiful dark velvety foliage, but then you can see the varicosum shape in there. Also, it has some of the red on the backs, which is a varicosum trait. And just the way that it kind of has like the veins is a varicosum trait as well, but it carries that dark velvetiness from the Milano Chrysum. This is also so much easier to grow than either of those parents. As I've said, I struggle with philodendron melanocrysum. Don't even have one in my collection anymore because I just couldn't figure that one out. And um, I've had my struggles with the varicosum, but the Splendid, I've never had any struggles with at all. I've chopped and propped this before. I've done the chop and extend method with this, and it's just always been so easy to grow. You can see I have a new leaf coming in right there. So pretty. Uh, yeah, I love my philodendron hybrids so much. They're some of my all-time favorite plants and they're usually really easy to grow as well, which is nice. I can't recommend this plant enough. I feel like I'm always singing its praises, honestly. I just love it. Can't believe how big mine is getting. I can't wait to get this on a different pole, actually, because like I said, it keeps falling over and this like plastic mesh DIY pole is just not cutting it. So I'm definitely gonna be putting this on a closed back pole, I think, when I, um, I guess soon. I was gonna say when I outgrows this one, but it's literally like, that's the last node right there. Look how close that is to the top. So I'm gonna have to propagate this soon, um, which is something I should actually start thinking about. This is a second vine. It has two vines. All my plants, they always have one vine that is doing really well and then one that's kind of lagging behind. Still beautiful though. But yeah, love my Splendid so much. I think it's just such a great plant. I, I can't recommend it enough. If you've been thinking about getting one, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay, and then last but not least, the number one favorite philodendron in my collection, at the moment at least, is my beautiful philodendron majestic. I love this plant so much. Another one that I feel like I'm always going on and on about, but it's just so incredible and I can't express how much joy it brings me. It's so beautiful. So this is another philodendron hybrid and this is a hybrid of philodendron viricosum again and philodendron soderoi, which is the silvery plant that I showed earlier. And again, it just gets the best traits from each of the parents. It gets beautiful silver splashing on the leaves from the philodendron soderoi. It's actually incredibly sparkly when the sun hits it. I think the moment that I really fell in love with this plant was when I saw it sitting in sunshine because it just looked like unreal or otherworldly it's so incredibly beautiful in the sun it's so so easy to grow beautiful large pillowy heart-shaped leaves the silver splashing on it almost is in like a camo pattern like it just looks so unique it's very very cool um and then it has the red backs from the philodendron varicosum again you can see this is a new leaf coming in very very bright very gorgeous the emergent leaves are just so stunning to watch come in Grows like a weed, is super easy, really easy to size up as well. I have mine growing on a thickly pole and it loves it. There's tons of roots in the pole, in the whole thing. I'm actually gonna be experimenting soon and adding a fourth extension, which they only recommend doing up to three, but I'm gonna do four and maybe just add like a stake or something and see how it does. But yeah, I just love this plant. It makes me so happy every time that I see it. And I know some people aren't a big fan of this one as much as they are of other philodendron hybrids or other philodendrons because they lose, apparently, they lose their silver once they mature. I haven't reached the point yet where mine's losing any silver, but you know, it's just something I'm willing to deal with. I guess I'll just chop it back or do whatever needs to be done in order to grow this plant and keep it looking nice because to me, she's worth the extra effort. But yeah, she's just so stunning. And even just the way the leaves all lie, like I just think that this is such a beautiful plant. So yeah, Philodendron Majestic is my number one favorite philodendron. All right, that was a long one. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I really appreciate you. If you made it to the end, leave me any type of plant emoji, any leaf or potted plant or whatever planty emoji you can find. 
leave that in the comments so that I know you watched the whole video. Thank you so much. You are the best. Also leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite philodendron is. Is there any that I should add to my collection? Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. Also, if you could give this video a like, I would really appreciate that. Other than that, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.